the Horror. I'm Fedora, and welcome one and all to Oh the Horror's second year anniversary! Another year has come and gone, and looking back on it now, I can't help but think, thank fucking Christ! I mean, what have I had to be thankful for this year? I mean, yeah, I've had a couple of good movies to talk about, but those are outweighed by the Wishmaster 3's, Curses of the Puppet Master, Jaws the Revenges, and Grizzly Rages. And let's not forget, for a good chunk of that year, I was possessed by a demonic ghost and forced to fight for my very soul. So I'm more than happy to see the arse end of this year. And to wave a goodbye, what movie should I talk about? Well, what better way to end year number two than by talking about a movie about number two? This is how my mind works. Well, I hope you all brought a change of underwear. Because it's time to dig into 2003's... Monsterd. So this movie starts with a little girl waking up screaming after one of the studio's strobe lights goes off in her bedroom. And when her dad comes in to check on her, she of course asks him to read her a bedtime story. I'm always telling you a bedtime story, Munchkins. Why don't you tell me a bedtime story for a change? Okay, but it's real scary. I'm, I'm sure if I get scared, you, you can protect me. And with my confidence in the acting ability completely solidified, the girl begins to tell her terrifying tale, despite being the one who was scared just a second ago. Which brings us to the cheery community of Butt County. Oh, sorry, no. Boot County. Boot. Spot like this. Well, that's incredibly immature. I expected far better taste from the creators of Retarded. Yeah, the town looks decent and all, but over here in the Panasonic GX7, we arrive at the local jail where one of the prisoners has escaped his cell and is on the run before the guards even know he's gone. Hey, Schmidt. Jack Schmidt. Up and at him. Schmidt? I swear, Warden, the replica he had was so lifelike! Warden? Warden? Why won't you yell at me?! The escaped prisoner is named Jack Schmidt. An escaped serial killer named Jack, who via science will be transformed- Yeah, you see where I'm going with this. So this is a ripoff of Jack Frost, huh? Only minus the humour. And the dignity. Uh-huh. Headquarters of the FBI, huh? Also known as the emptiest government building in the world, it seems. Oh, never mind, there's like three people. In jeans. Schmidt's escaped. What? He found his cell empty about ten minutes ago. No, not empty. His cellmate was still there, thank God. So Jack enters the woods. <laughs> yeah, that, uh... That, uh, that was pretty embarrassing. Let's cut to these scientists. Some kind of malfunction happens with this evil professor's mystery experiment, causing grandma scientist here to rush in to try and contain the resulting chemical leak. But she's too late, and winds up covered in shit. In any other movie in the world, that would have been a joke. Oh, I get it now. This is a prequel to Return of the Living Dead. The evil scientist seems to think that whatever happened to Grandma was apparently a success, so his next brilliant move is to drive into the middle of the town in broad fucking daylight and dump a barrel of his deadly chemical into the sewer system, where Jack Schmidt, back on his feet apparently, has already fled to. Over at the Butt Police Station, that FBI lady whose name is Agent Hannigan meets up with the local authorities to help them find Jack. Susan Hannigan, aren't you the agent that brought Jack Schmidt in? Yes, I am. So our hero is the law enforcement officer who originally caught the killer? How original. And are you guys seriously going to bring up that built-in function title every time we cut to a new location? Well, I guess that's okay. 
Because of this lighting quality, we could be back in the finale of Grizzly Rage, for all I know. Free Schmidt! Hands in the air! We should be. You shot me! I just assumed the guns were for decoration! Then the bad man fell into a pipe and got sucked down into this big tank of sewer water. Air! We couldn't afford a stunt double to film that shot, so here he is now in the new tube. Can I just ask quickly, is the fact that this is being told as a bedtime story going to have any bearing on the plot at all? No! No, I, I thought not. Carry on. So it seems that evil scientists' sciencey liquid all ended up in this one area. And like Jack Frost... Seriously, how many more times am I going to have to say that? Jack Slash all melts away after he falls into it. So that night, after the police take Jack's remains away, the evil scientist and his assistant return after learning what has happened and plan to drain the chemical into the public sewer system to avoid being linked to it. They start sneaking around the local sewage plant, with the music and sound effects really giving me an urge to play Goldeneye 64. This is restricted. Yes. The next morning, while catching a cup of coffee with the town sheriff, we find out there's going to be a big annual chili cook-off soon. And as many disgusting notions as that will inevitably hold, it's not nearly as vomit-inducing as this flirting dialogue. You old sweet talker. How about taking a dozen glazed old-fashioned when you go? I know Dan and Rick like them. about you sit on my face and make me look like a glazed donut? Ain't no cop worth his badge that doesn't take your donuts home, honey. Hey, keep going, guys. I only kinda wanna hang myself. Ah, back in the sewer, huh? With an unsuspecting repairman? Well, I guess it's time to see what the monster finally looks like. What's it gonna be, like a brown Jack Frost clone or something? It would be a true crime not to use this clip during this review. And seeing as I'm probably going to be spending most of my time making fun of the actual reveal when it appears, I think now is as good a time as any to play it. That is one big pile of shit. Oh, hold the clips. I think the movie's trying to be funny again. You can end up just like me. A smelly, unemployed, don't smoke and dick weed, living off other people's spare change, and shooting up public restrooms. <laughs> Groovy. What'd you say to me, you little punk bitch? I want a lawyer! You want a fucking lawyer? How about this? What? How do you like that, huh? Oh, sorry, I was, uh, looking for the point. After getting a call about the dead repairman, the cops, along with Agent Hannigan, head back into the sewer and find his corpse, along with Jack's melted flesh, which they bag and tag for analysis. It stinks like a slaughterhouse. Or, I don't know, a sewer. Back on the surface, Jack has begun attacking the citizens. And... Wow. That's the monster costume, huh? It looks like an old Doctor Who monster that's been left out in the sun for too long. Makes sense, I guess. This movie is as ugly as a Sontaran's ass anyway. The cops arrive after the murder, and make a terrifying discovery. It's Jack Schmidt's autograph. I wouldn't get too excited. After all, it ain't worth shit. Hannigan, meanwhile, is paying a visit to the evil scientist's house to question him about the flesh and chemical samples they found in the sewer. He dances around her questions, obviously, and as soon as she leaves, organizes his goons to head down there and look around. Jack, complete with sound effects from the T-Rex of Jurassic Park, appears and kills them all off. Off camera, obviously. I mean, your budget and all. Wait a minute. Jack Schmidt? <laughs> oh. Cause it sounds like jack shit! <laughs> I just get it! <laughs> That's funny! 
<laughs> For five year olds! Yep, okay, nothing unusual about that. No need to panic or inform anyone about whatever the fuck that was. So, Hannigan and her assistant start working on a plan to destroy Jack. First, they need to... Figure out a way to flush this thing out in the open. Ha ha ha. And after that, they contact a local entomologist to get access to an army of flies to eat him once he's out. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, they'll need to hurry, because more citizens are beginning to fall prey to the killer cack. How big was this doo-doo? It was bigger than you! Okay, so, uh, did you say, uh, you said that there were, there were peanuts in it. You did say peanuts. Uh, would you say, uh, creamy or chunky? So, th it sounds like you're describing a large haagen -Dazs. Stop. Please. Please stop. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare try to have a romantic subplot complete with saxophone music in a movie about an evil shit monster. You degenerate assholes. Ha 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 ha, dick joke. Well, thank God that's over. So, on to the next morning, and Hannigan and the sheriff are trying to tell the local council about Jack, resulting in something that I have not done yet, and will most likely never do for the duration of this movie. <laughs> There's a bloodthirsty shitman hunting its prey from within your town sewer system. <laughs> hey, don't hold them up. They have to head over to the crowd of funniest home video show next. Those idiots will laugh at anything. The evil scientist, it seems, has decided to come down to the sewers himself now and try to lure Jack out with... Corn and peanuts. Which, you know, obviously works. Who dared invade my underground lair? Who disturbs my slumber? The two of them decide to team up so the scientists can continue to research Jack. There's a rosy career future. And speaking of research, Hannigan and the sheriff discover Jack's apparent weakness. And it's pretty much what you'd expect. Bismatrol and toilet paper. I refuse to believe that Adam Sandler didn't have at least some part in writing this goddamn movie. Just what do you think is going through the minds of these actors as they stand there tying diapers to themselves? So our brave heroes... Venture into Jack's lair, with Hannigan's assistant inexplicably watching everyone on a radar system, and the entomologist bringing over the flies. In a... dog... carrier. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm getting another reading here. Good lord, it's coming up right behind him. The demonic dung beast chases them around the sewer for a while, killing the evil scientist along the way who came down with them for some reason. And after a while, he's brought out into the open. The team lay on him with the Bismatrol, which manages to stun him. And then the Entomologist, who I may point out was never actually fully told what was going on, arrives and unleashes the, what I assume to be flies, which slowly devour Jack until he drops down dead. So with the town saved and the bedtime story seemingly over, this movie comes to an end with the only truly scary line to come out of this filth. And then Hollywood bought the story rights and made it into a movie that cost a hundred million dollars. And that was Monster! Anyone who knows me knows that I am all for So Bad It's Good movies. But this... This is just stupid. This is the sort of story people in those movies tell as a joke. 
The acting is potentially the worst I have ever witnessed. The humour is juvenile, unfunny, and all over the place. The plot is a complete rip-off of both Jaws and Jack Frost, souring both movies' names. There, there is basically no enjoyment to be found here anywhere, not on a horror stance, comedy, or even B-grade. It is, as its name suggests, shit. Pathetic, ugly to behold, shit. And now if you'll excuse me, I gotta go make a monster turd of my own. Uh, come on, come on. Talk it to me, mama. Uh, oh, I like it like that, baby.